guys, sixth graders. So today we're moving on to lesson three. So the last couple of days we've looked at percents and fractions, decimals and fractions. Today we're gonna look at percents and decimals. So we're on page 109 if you're following along in your book. And if you're not, if you don't have your book with you, that is okay. These pages are on Canvas and you can do them on a separate sheet of paper if you want to. So let's look at our real world link. It says a recent survey tells the, the favorite subjects of students at Martin Middle School. So we have math is 28%, art is 16%, science is 21%, English is 13%, social studies 15%, and other subjects is 7%. So if you remember from our previous lesson, all of our decimal or all of our fraction, sorry, all of our percents can be written as a fraction over 100. So if we look at math, which is 28%, we know that that's 28 over 100. Science is 21% or 21 over 100. Art is 16% or 16 over 100. English is 13% or 13 over 100. Social studies 15% or 15 over 100 and other subjects 7% or 7 over 100. So we need to write each fraction from this section as a decimal. So in order to write a fraction as a decimal, it needs to be a number over a multiple of 10. So 10, 100, 1000, and so on. So 28 over 100 as a decimal we would say 28 hundredths, or 0 0.28. Science, the same 0 0.21 or 21 hundredths. Art, 16 hundredths. Social studies, 15 hundredths. English, 13 hundredths. And other subjects, 7 hundredths. Notice how I had to put a zero in front of the seven to make it seven hundredths. If I had written the seven here instead of here, I would have written seven tenths. So if we look back at exercise two at all of these decimals, then we can look at these to change these into percents. So we're gonna go to the next page and we're gonna look at some of these examples. So to write percents as decimals, to write a percent as a decimal, we divide by 100 and then remove the percent sign. This is the same as moving the decimal point two places to the left. So the example, I'm gonna write some things on another sheet of paper so it's a little bit easier to see. So the example, 48% would be the same as 0 0.48 or 48 hundredths. So what I did was I got rid of the percent sign and I moved my decimal point one, two places to turn it into a decimal. Another way to write it, another way is to write a fraction as a decimal and then go from there. So let's look at these examples. Number one, 56%. Our first method would be to write the percent as a fraction. So if we have 56%, we know that that equals 56 over 100. And we know that that equals 56 hundredths. This is all basically the same number. Our other method is what we did in our other example to move the decimal point. So we can start with 56%. We're gonna drop the decimal, or sorry, drop the percent sign. And we're gonna move the decimal point one, two places over to here and add a zero in front of it. Our second example is 8%. So we can write that as a fraction as eight over 100, and then we can write it as a decimal zero and eight hundredths. 
Or we can do it the moving the decimal way by 8% equals, we're gonna drop the decimal point, or sorry, drop the percent symbol, and move our decimal point one, two places, and that means we need to add a couple of zeros. And our next example is 2%. So if we do this by moving the decimal, we'll drop the percent sign and move the decimal point one, two places, and add in our zeros. So let's look at some practice problems. So A is 32%. We have to write this as a decimal. So I'm gonna do it first with the moving the decimal point. So I'm gonna drop the percent symbol then I'm going to move my decimal point one, two places, and add my zero in front of it. So 32% is the same as 32 hundredths. For B, we have 6%. I'm going to do this one as a fraction. So 6% is equal to 6 over 100 as a fraction, or 6 hundredths. And I would write 6 hundredths as 0 0.06, 6 hundredths. And C, I'll do both ways. So we have 93%. I'll start with writing it using the, moving the decimal point. So we'll drop the percent symbol. And we'll move our decimal point from the end, because remember all whole numbers have an invisible decimal point at the end. We'll move it one, two places to the front and add our zero. Or I can rewrite it as a fraction, 93 over 100 or 93 hundredths. Okay, so now let's look at, look at this going the other direction. So now we're gonna write decimals as percents. So to write a decimal as a percent, we're going to multiply by 100 and add a percent sign. So we're doing the opposite of what we did over here. So for example, if we have the decimal thirty-six hundredths, We're going to, or sorry, I made a mistake here. Ignore this. So 36 hundredths, we're going to add our percent sign. Now we're going to move our decimal two places to the right this time. So we'll go one, two, to here, which comes up to 36%. So the next example says write 38, or sorry, 0 0.38 or 38 hundredths as a percent. So we have two methods again. We can write it as a percent um, using fractions, or we can do the moving the decimal point. So let's do both of those. So we have 38 hundredths, which is the same as 38 over 100. And we know from previously that anything over 100, the top number is our percent. Or our second method, moving the decimal point. 38 hundredths, we need to add the percent to the end and move our decimal point two places to the right. One, two to give us 38%. Now, if we have something like this, 2 tenths, that we need to write as a percent, it's going to be a little bit different because 
two tenths as a fraction would look like this. Now we can't write something over 10 as a percent, but if we multiply both numbers by 10, we can change our denominator to 100 and our numerator to 20, which we know is 20%. Or, and this way isn't written in the book, or if we have two hundredths at the end of, or sorry, two tenths, at the end of every decimal number, there's a whole bunch of zeros that go on forever and ever and ever. So we can add one of those zeros to the end. Now we have 20 hundredths, and we can turn this into a percent using either method. So that's two different ways we can do those. So let's look at D, E, and F. So we're writing each decimal as a percent. So if we look at D first, we have zero and 47 hundredths. So let's try this one with turning it into a fraction first. So 47 hundredths, 47 over 100, we know that anything over 100, our top number is our percent, which makes it 47%. For E, 73 hundredths. Let's do this one by moving the decimal. So we need to add our percent to the end and move our decimal two places to the right. One two, which gives us 73%. And finally, we have F, which is 5 tenths. So we're going to do this all three of the ways that I've shown you so far. So let's start with turning it into a fraction. And remember, we have to make this over 100. So we'll have to multiply the top and the bottom by 10 to make it 50 over 100 or 50%. Our second method is to turn it into, or sorry, is to move the decimal point. So we'll have our decimal point and we'll add our percent to the end, and we have to move our decimal point to the right two places. One, two. So that puts our decimal point there. We'll have to add a zero to the end to make it 50%. And finally, we can try that other method that I showed you. We know that five tenths since we have an infinite number of zeros on the end, is the same as 50 hundredths. We can go from there and we know that this is the same as 50 over 100, which is 50%. So basically, any way you slice it, 5 tenths is equal to 50%. Look at that, I was ahead of the game. Our next example is using that last method, annexing a zero or adding a zero to the end. So you have three different methods to use for turning percents into decimals and decimals into percents. While you're working on these pages, if you have any questions or you get stuck at all, please send me an email, send me a text, or give me a call, I am here to help you. You also have a practice page on Canvas to work on to help you with this. And like I told you before, there is a notes page on Canvas that I highly recommend you print out and keep inside your go book or in your math book or somewhere safe because those notes are really going to help you to remember the different methods of transitioning percents to decimals, decimals to fractions, and all of the other things that we're looking at in this chapter. All right, let me know if you have any questions. I am here to help you. Have a great day, sixth graders.